Welcome into our Facebook Day of Answers to ABC2 News or WMR2 News tuned up with uh, GBMC, taking your questions and answering very important issues about the flu today. Dr. Melvin Blanchard, he is the chairman of the Department of Medicine from GBMC, joining us for this live conversation. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you. You know, this is such an important year. Uh, last year, they said that flu numbers were down, partly probably because people being very, very concerned about the pandemic, people masking up, social distancing. But are there concerns this year that we could see a surge in the numbers? No, absolutely. We can never predict what's going to happen. Um, the vaccine for the flu that's chosen is based on an estimate of you know, what we're going to see. And we don't know how uh, the flu is going to behave. It's very possible that this year we could have two pandemics at the same time. We could have a huge breakout of flu and a huge breakout of, of COVID. And that would be really detrimental. detrimental. The, the, the really only way for us as individuals to protect ourselves is to be vaccinated, um, to make sure that we follow social distancing, to make sure we wash our hands, wear our masks. You know, that's, that's really, really important. Well, doctor, I'm proud to say that I got my flu shot this weekend. My daughter yeah. and I got our flu shots. I felt like I was getting it earlier this year. When is it typically advised and how long does it last? So, you know, you may not know this, but uh, we do have flu all year, but the, it, it, it's not until about um, uh, the fall and the winter when we actually see the spike. And the, the biggest spike is somewhere between December and February. But around this time is a time when we begin to see uh, lots of flu cases. And, and the reason for that is that the virus does survive very well in, in cold weather on the inside where we congregate. You know, when it's cold, we don't want to go outside. So uh, we spend more time indoors where the virus really enjoys. And um, so it's very easy for the virus to transmit um, uh, during the winter time. So what is the peak? What is the time that you should have it by? Should you, by the end of October? That's That was a time. Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. So that is a CDC recommendation that uh, we all have a flu vaccine by the end of October. And it's good for how long? Or are you possibility of getting a second flu shot if you get it so early? So it, it usually lasts until the end of the season. Um, if the season is prolonged, one may need, you know, an extra dose later on, but that's rare. It's rare that, that we, we actually need an extra dose. Um, there's some people who get the flu vaccine as early as they possibly can. Sometimes it's available late August. I think that's a bit early and that might uh, create a problem with coverage for the entire season, which could go until May of the subsequent year. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard concerns always every year, when, and you just mentioned it, about the efficacy of the flu vaccine based on whatever strain, whatever that you're treating this year. Do we know at this point if the shot that we're getting now is going to be effective for this strain or does that something that comes out later on in the season? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit early. Um, we'll, we'll find out soon. Okay. What about um, the concerns of COVID versus the flu? I mean, when you have the symptoms, they're kind of similar. How do you know if you have the flu versus having COVID? Oh, that's a that's a really good one. Um, the the symptoms for the flu and for COVID overlap, so it's very difficult to tell, you know, whether one has the flu or COVID. There are some symptoms that may be different for COVID, such as uh, the loss of taste or smell, and many people have heard about that. But not everyone with COVID will have. Uh, loss of taste or smell. So it's really difficult to tell um, from a symptom standpoint. Uh, but of course, we can do testing. We can test for flu. We've been doing that for decades, and we can certainly now test for, for COVID. So uh, the way to separate it now is to, is, to, is to do the testing. Flu season is something that is very important to take seriously every year. But obviously, given the fact that we're still in this pandemic, even more critical now. Tell me why. Well, um, you know, one can certainly have flu and COVID at the same time, um, and that could be deadly. COVID by itself, as you know, is, is, um, uh, is a deadly virus. Um, it can cause significant morbidity and mortality. People can become very sick. They're not able to go to work. They transmit it to others who 
might have uh, an immunocompromised state, and that can increase their risk of death. As you know, we have a lot of individuals in our community with diabetes, with uh, who have very high BMIs, obesity, who have COPD, asthma, um, other um, conditions, cancer, and so on. And if they acquire this, then they're at risk, very serious risk of being hospitalized and dying uh, from that. And having both the flu and COVID at the same time makes it really uh, challenging. The other thing is that if we have flu and COVID, as you know, we need hospital beds mm -hmm. for COVID. Mm -hmm. If we are occupying hospital beds with patients who have flu that can be prevented, then patients with COVID are not able to get in. And we could have in the hospitals, flu and COVID patients and other patients with routine conditions um, you know, that need care will not be able to get that care. So there are lots of ramifications uh, if we have uh, a flu and COVID outbreaks. So everyone needs to really focus on getting their vaccinations for both of these um, uh, diseases, conditions. Who should be getting the flu shot? Who's the most vulnerable? Well, actually, everybody should. <laughs> if you're more than six months, and I'm not a pediatrician, but mm -hmm. um, if you're generally over the age of six months, you should be getting that flu vaccine uh, every year. What about women who are pregnant? So that's something that they should discuss with their with their doctor. Um, but um, clearly, there's benefit to uh, to being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. There's actually a vaccine for every type of person. Um, you know, there was probably a time when we only had one version of the flu vaccine, but we do have versions of the vaccine for, for every type of individual. The individuals who will say, well, I can't take the flu vaccine because um, I have an egg allergy. Well, we have vaccines for that. Uh, we have some people who may say, well, I don't want a shot. We have a nasal spray mm -hmm. uh, vaccine. So, so we, we have people who may need an extra um uh, extra potent uh, uh, vaccine, we, we can provide that. So there are lots of options uh, for uh, every single person to be able to have uh, the vaccine. Now, as I said, I got the vaccine on Sunday. When is it considered effective? How long after when you get the shot? When does it kick in? Good, good question. Um, it usually takes after vaccination about uh, 10 days to two weeks. So, so two weeks is a good time point where uh, the body should have generated enough antibodies to provide uh, significant protection. What about the old wives' tale, the folks who say, oh, every year that I get the flu shot, I end up getting sick. All I have, I'll go on record as saying, is a sore arm <laughs> from the shot, no illness. But a lot of people still believe that to this day. Well, it's actually true that people have symptoms after getting the vaccine. I mean, it's not just in their head. Uh, they have a sore arm, some people have chills, some people have a fever, uh, body aches, um, but this is very short-lived. It's, it's for a couple of days. If one has the flu, it's going to be for several days, a week, 10 days. Um, uh, so, you know, it's a worthy investment to have the flu vaccine, even if uh, you're going to have some symptoms in the near term for a couple of days. And most people don't have uh, those symptoms. Now, can you get the flu shot and the vaccine at the same time? You, the COVID vaccine? Right, COVID vaccine. Oh, absolutely. The CDC allows us to, to have both simultaneously. So, um, you know, I think it's a good idea for those who have not had a COVID vaccine who are getting the, the flu shot, they should get both at the same time. What about the booster? Yeah, the, it, there shouldn't be any problem with a booster either. So I guess if somebody's listening and saying, oh, I don't want to get the flu shot, I'm just going to do my social distancing and wear my mask, what would you say to convince them about how important it is to get the flu shot? I think they should do all of those things. Um, but they should think of themselves and think of others uh, and also think about their community. And when you think about coming down with the flu, um, it's going to really be disruptive because you really can't go to work. Um, no, no employer wants someone who has the flu on the job. So that's going to affect uh, one economically. 
um, then if you live with someone else, uh, maybe you are young and healthy and can, can survive the flu, but there may be someone around you who may not be able to, um, to tolerate that because of their uh, other conditions, whether it's the conditions I've mentioned, asthma, COPD, uh, cancer, um, you know, other immunized, uh, 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 immunosuppressive uh, states. So you have to think about yourself, think about uh, other individuals um, in your home, but also think about your community. Um, for those who get sick and have to take a hospital bed, there's a problem. It means that someone else who really needs it can't get it. Um, so, I mean, I think they should be thinking about all those factors. The different uh, variants that have come out, the Delta variant and the other most recently, I can't think of that one off the top of my head, but do those come into play or is that pretty much still categorized as COVID when you think about the efficacy of the flu shot and the uh, COVID-19 vaccine? Are those something that we need to be worried about or just get both? No, no, you, you just get the vaccine. Um, the COVID vaccine is effective uh, in protecting individuals from the Delta variant, which is the one that's circulating predominantly. Um, it's very easy to transmit, easier than previous variants. Um, so again, another reason for people to get their COVID vaccination. When do you anticipate us seeing, unfortunately, an uptick in flu cases? Is you typically, as it gets colder, Yes, yes, yes. As I was saying earlier, uh, in the winter time, um, it the humidity inside is quite low. The virus really enjoys that environment. It thrives in that environment. Uh, it's cold. We don't want to go outside, so we congregate indoors, and that's where the virus is. And it's very easy to transmit as a result. So as it begins to get colder and people begin to congregate more indoors, staying more indoors, um, then we will see uh, a rise in, in, in flu if people are not wearing their masks, social distancing, washing their hands, those kinds of things. And this is really interesting when you look at last year, mm -hmm. uh, actually 2019 um, uh, flu season versus the flu season last year, there was a huge difference. You know, last year we were worried about COVID and what did we do? We wore masks, we social distanced, and we saw hardly any flu, very few flu cases, very few hospitalizations. Um, so there was a huge difference between last year where the rate was very low because of our practices and the year before 2019, um, it looks like we had about 80 times the number of hospitalizations last year compared with the year before. And that's just because of, um, you know, perhaps more people got uh, the flu vaccine, but, but the social distancing, the mask wearing, uh, it's very, very helpful. But I would think this year would be troubling because a lot of the, the mandates have been lifted. Um, you know, the businesses are open 100 percent. People are back to socializing in terms of activities and maybe not being as careful as they were last year. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right about that. Um, many people have had vaccination and there are still some individuals who have been vaccinated who um, are getting uh, infected with, with COVID. So we still have to wear uh, those masks. And um, this year, because there are more people vaccinated, there is the likelihood that people will feel so protected that um, you know, they don't need to wear their masks, they don't need to social distance. And um, you know, if someone is infected, they can transmit it. You know, they may or may not have symptoms. All right. Dr. Melvin Blanchard, thank you so much for joining us, answering our questions here on our Facebook Live. And for folks just tuning in or maybe getting only the tail end bit pieces, so we're going to have it rebroadcast for you on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube page at WMER2news.com. Dr. Blanchard, thanks again for joining us. Kelly, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.